stretch your right hand towards this altar. Something is about to happen now to some people who the Lord has arranged for them to be here this morning. In case you are here and all of a sudden, uncommon hatred arises against you. Unexplainable hatred. Where you have been welcomed before, now they don't want to see you anymore. Perhaps you are here too. It's as if you have been completely rejected. No one is interested in your affairs. Stretch your right hand to this altar. Masse kapola katenda. Rima sepia ni kariko tanda. Marama santia. Father, the hands that are stretched forward here, let them carry the fire power of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, soak these hands in the blood of Jesus. Let this hand wipe away every plantation of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Now, with that hand, you will begin to rub your forehead as if you want to wipe out something. If you are doing it, you are having a headache, don't worry. If you are doing it, you are feeling dizzy, don't worry. It means that there is a transaction taking place in your body. There is the power of God falling upon that person over there. Rub it on the surface of the earth. Every mark of hatred, every mark of rejection, every mark of tragedy, every mark of sorrow, every mark of failure, be rubbed off by the blood of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now, with a voice as loud as fire, pray this prayer. After that first operation you have done, pray it with fire and with power. You will say, The month of April. Your voice is not loud enough. Hear the word of the Lord. Favor me by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree. Utter that decree now. Papota Sapia Le Katenda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for your children you are brought here by your power. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, open our understanding afresh. And in the prayer meeting of this morning, meet us at the point of our needs. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Have your sin. God bless you. A fortnight ago, we started a series here. Who can remember the series? What was it? Say it loud if you know it. And we began to look at these things stage by stage. For the benefit of those who were not here in a fortnight, let me just recap quickly what we said that day. We read from the book of Matthew 7-7 seven, seven, that day. And Matthew 7-7 seven, seven has this to say, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And that day we began to explain that a time comes in a man's life that his burdens become too heavy for him. 
And a time comes in a man's life when the harassment of the enemy is overwhelming. A time comes in a man's life when it will appear as if everywhere he turns, things are upside down. A time comes in a man's life that he will have tried everything he knows how to try, but he's not getting results. A time comes in a man's life that he has prayed the normal prayer, he knows how to pray, and nothing is happening. And then I began to explain that day that there are two keys that can get you what you want. The key of power and the key of wisdom. And I said, but but both keys are produced from the womb of prayer. Then we said, when you are desperate for an answer, then you change your realm of prayers. And we began to discuss how many realms of prayer? There are seven. And that day we covered four. So we'll cover the other three today and then we'll go into practical prayer. And I know there is somebody here this morning. The mountain that has been bursting against you shall somersault and disappear this morning. In the name of Jesus. And what you have been struggling to get shall begin to pursue you instead. A seven for your men to die. Then we began to discuss the level of intensity in prayers. We said the first one is asking. Asking is to want, to desire, to mention. We said nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you try the asking, you are not getting through. Go to the next level, which is seeking, which includes inquiry prayers. Includes the prayer of why, 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 why. And I said seven things are necessary if you want to pray the inquiry prayers. Holiness, determination, diligence, consistency, discipline, joy, praises. You can get this CD and follow up more on this. Then we want to knock in prayers. Another level of intensity. And that day I began to explain what is prayers. Three, three hour prayer, one, one hour prayer. And I said, in that level of prayer, you need determination, perseverance, ruggedness, violent and radical faith. And that knocking is becoming a holy nuisance, a pest to heaven. You become like that desperate widow that when the judge was tired, he had to respond. The Bible says, Ye who remember the name of Jehovah, Give him no peace. Give him no rest. Until that established Jerusalem and makes it a place in the earth. Then we went to four, which is liquid prayers. This petition combined with weeping and wailing. And how effective that is. And we, I remember I read to you Hebrews 5 7. If you try all these four levels and you still think you are not getting an answer, then you move to level five, which is vows. The prayer of vows. Vowing. A vow is like a contract that brings down the hand of God into your situation. The prayer of vow is very hard praying and also dangerous praying. The prayer of vow. But it's a level of intensity. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. After Anna had prayed and prayed and prayed, she now moved her intensity to the prayer of vows. And immediately she did that, things began to happen very quickly. The prayer of vows. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. The vow that Anna made there is not easy at all. Look at what she said. And she vowed a vow. Can you see that in your Bible? Let me hear the sisters reading it. And the brothers? And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look at the affliction of the handmaid and remember me and not forget the handmaid, but will give unto the handmaid a man child, then, look at the vow, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. He said, if you give me this child, I donate it to you completely. 
was a vow. Somebody has been praying for a child. Now he said, if you give it to me, I'll give it back. And immediately Samuel was a few years old. She went and dumped Samuel in the temple of God. It's a very hard vow. Vows are hard praying. That's why you must be careful whatever vow you make. And do not make useless vows. Do not make fireless vows. Do not come before God and say, God, if you do this to me, I will jump up seven times when you have ten million to give. Which is the totality of all your money. If all you have in this world is one million naira, and you want to pray the prayer of vow, a good vow is when you say, Lord, <laughs> if you do this, all this money goes to you. Everything. That is a vow. I will roll on the floor seven times. You have money you are not putting down. You have house you are not giving to God. A fireless vows. It's good to roll on the floor before God as a son of humility. You must also add something costly to that vow. If you really want great answers. Vows must be terribly costly. Terribly costly. David wanted to sacrifice to God. And somebody wanted to give him a free land. He said, no. Don't give it to me free. I must buy it. It must cost me something. So anybody who does not have the heart of it should not go to the prayer of vows at all. He's not ready to throw things away. That others will say, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? Are you crazy? What is wrong with you? You are the testimony of that woman here that was seeking for the fruit of the womb. She brought a car. Guys, she has. Dropped it in the house of God with the keys and she trekked home. That's a vow. Not, I will jump up seven times. I will give wave offering. I will go to the front of my father's house in the village and shout seven hallelujah. That's not a vow. That's prayer of vow. The next intensity of prayer, that was number five. Number six now, is what you call pray until something happens fasting. That is purposeful fasting. Push fasting. Jesus said, like I was telling those of you who came here on Wednesday, they brought a demonic case to the disciple to pray for. These people prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. But that has never been their experience. In their experience, when they say, go, the thing goes. When they say, I bind you, the thing is bound. They try all those methods on this demon. The demon did not answer. They now went back to Jesus. And Jesus just spoke one word. And the demon left. So the, the disciples came to Jesus. He said, Master, how is it that we were not able to cast it out? He now told them, This kind goeth not forth, except by fasting and prayer. Jesus said, Certain problems will not give way in the life of a man until you take this dimension. This is why I was warning those who come to work with supernatural that very soon it will become two days drive. It will be two days. And then we will stand at our door. Say, Are you fasting? Say no. Go home. You? No. Go home. Because some problems will not shift until you have fasting to your prayers. In Isaiah chapter 58 verse 5 to 6 Isaiah 58, 5 to 6. Please, let's go there quickly. It's important you look at this. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 5 and 6. If you are there, say yes. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as bulrush? And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Without call this a fast? And an acceptable day to the Lord. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? One. To lose the band of wickedness. What is the first function there? The band of what? Wickedness. To lose the bands of wickedness. Meaning that some bounds of wickedness will not be loose until fasting comes in. Can you raise up your right hand to the heavenly? And with a voice louder than anyone around you. Say, wickedness of the wicked. I 
are signed against my life. Expire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree it. Your voice is not loud enough. Wickedness of the wicked are signed against my life. Expire. Jesus, then we pray. So, in that passage, one main function of your fasting is to lose the bands of wickedness. Two, to undo the heavy burdens. There are some load that the enemy has placed on people's heads, and if we try to remove it, they put a heavier one. That's why we pray in Mountain of Fire. And every owner of evil load, carry your load. That's why we pray that kind of prayer. It's because there are invisible loads that people carry, which make life so uncomfortable for them. Here am I on this pulpit. I've not offended anybody here, I hope. And you have not offended me too. But as I stand on this pulpit now, if we gather all the loudspeakers in this church, and you add the pulpit on top of it and put it on my head where I'm standing here. I might still be talking to you, but I will not be that friendly again. Not because I don't want to be friendly, but because I see load that is weighing me down because you are putting something on my head. So many of the people who do strange things, there are invisible loads on their heads that this kind of prayer with fasting is what can remove it. Can you lay your right hand on your head? And declare this again louder than anyone here. Owners of evil Lord, I am not your candidate. Carry your Lord in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree that one. Something is happening over there. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Yes, 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 yes. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's go on a little bit. So the first thing that is to do what? To lose the bounds of wickedness. The second thing that is to undo the everybody's. Then three is to let the oppressed go free. Freedom from oppression. That is why in the deliverance program of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry there is always a dry fast in it. It's because without that fasting some oppression will not be shifted away. The Bible says thou shall be far from oppression. Thou shall be far from oppression. Can you shout this again loud? Oppression power attacking my star. Let me hear the sister shouting. Let me hear the brother shouting the same thing. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody is supposed to be shouting this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And then lastly, and that ye break every yoke. So fasting is a yoke breaker. That's why Moses fasted. Hannah fasted. Elijah fasted. Samuel fasted. Elisha fasted. Jehoshaphat fasted. Esther fasted. Jesus 
fasted. So if Jesus had to fast, if Jesus had to pray, how about us? Food plunge the whole of the human race into the problem we are in now. Israel, soul is bad right because of food. The curses that God put on the house of Eli the priest was because of food. The children of Eli were cursed for eating God's offering. So Christians who want progress, they need to fast. Fast in obedience to the word of God. You fast to be purified from sin. You fast to gather spiritual strength. You fast to bring God into, your, into difficult situations. You fast to seek divine revelation. You fast so that the power of God can move in your situation. So those of you who are afraid of fasting, you should stop being afraid. Fasting does not kill. But the fasting will first of all humble you. It will help you to establish priorities in your life. It will weaken the flesh. So that your spirit man can be sensitive and can rise. And this is why it is important. If however, you are now confronted with some situations and you need to address it. You need to bring up the level of your prayer. Then some level of fasting, which is different from the normal way you are doing, have to come in. However, let me give a small guideline. So that somebody will say, Ah, it's Joe that said I should go and do 40 days dry fast. Before you embark on fasting that is more than seven days, that is a dry fast that is more than seven days, you must obtain divine direction. Don't try and just imitate others to do what God has not asked you to do. One day dry, fine. Two days dry, fine. Three days dry, fine. But if you want to go beyond three days, you have to start drinking water after that three days. A man will remain alive for a long time without food. But you can't live long without water. Once you are planning towards a dry fast, you need to prepare for it. You have to stop drinking tea. You definitely must not be drinking coffee. Things like Coca-Cola or those who, who eat cola, you have, to, you have to stop it. Because materials from those things will stun your body and will give you serious headache later if you don't stop it. It will give you serious headache when you start the fasting. Then when you are fasting in a fast like this, stop eating too much before the fast. That's the mistake some of us make. When somebody knows that uh, tomorrow is palm was vengeance, then we prepare three bowls of eba for today. It's a mistake. <laughs> Anybody who wants to do fasting and you want to enjoy it, you start telling your stomach that fasting is coming. Fasting is coming. Fasting is coming. By reducing what you are taking little by little, little by little. But if you give it a large amount, all of a sudden you just go and dry like that. There will be massive protest. And that's what causes trouble. If you want to do a long fast, you eat lots of fruits before you start the fasting. And when you break, you break gently. Break gently. Stop eating when you feel that you are full. Don't continue eating when you know you are full. You will inconvenience yourself. Definitely, you can't do dry fast and break the dry fast by soaking gari in water. You have to drink something gentler than that. And during a long fast, you won't be too physically active because you will dissipate your strength. And these are strategies you can use when you want to move your intensity to that level. I'm praying for somebody here that the power of God will bring you uncommon results. In the name of Jesus. Now, the last level of intensity is called wrestling prayers. Wrestling prayers. What is wrestling prayer? Wrestling prayers is a prayer as described in Matthew eleven twelve. It says, as from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Wrestling prayer is unsanitized prayer. Violence in prayers. 
It is the midnight battles. It is the machine gun prayers. Those are lesson prayers. The kind of prayer Jacob prayed here that you see on the altar. For seven hours, it was on it. Machine gun prayers. Unless thou bless me, I will not let you go. Unless thou bless me, I will not let you go. One prayer happened for seven hours. What is resting prayers? Resting prayer is Elijah kind of prayer. Elijah put his head between his knees. He prayed the first time. He said, go and check. I won't check. He said, no rain, sir. So go again. Go and check. No rain, sir. Go again. Go and check. No rain, sir. With his head between his knees, he continued like that. As he was praying, he was cross-checking the results. You will pray to get results in the name of Jesus. And you will provoke your own full of blessing in the name of Jesus. Until you got to number seven. Then the servant says, Sir, I saw a cloud like the hand of a man. He said, That's it. Then it's coming. What is resting prayer? Resting prayer is jail kind of prayers. Bullet prayers. Prayers with holy madness. We're talking about wrestling prayers now. Unsanitized prayers. You see, the kind of prayer you see the psalmist praying is not sanitized at all. In fact, some modern day Bible, Bible scholars, they want to remove the prayers of the psalmist from the Bible. They say it's too wicked. That he's issuing curses on people. Those are the unsanitized prayers. He said, said, let God strike my enemy by the cheekbones. He shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. To dash is to furiously and violently throw down. Unsanitized prayer. Violence in prayers. It's the midnight battles. It's the machine gun prayers. One prayer for hours. It's the Elijah kind of prayer. Then is the Jehu kind of prayer. Jehu kind of prayer. What is Jehu kind of prayer? Say, throw Jezebel down. Let the dogs eat her up. Let her blood be split on the floor. Let the blood be split on the floor. That's Jehu prayer. What is wrestling prayer? It's prayers with holy madness. What is wrestling prayer? It's prayer combining seven items. There are seven things that are involved. We talk about wrestling prayers. One, constancy. Constancy. Two, aggression. Three, word bomb. Using the word of God like bomb. Word bomb. Four, hard fasting. Five, Day and night prayers. Day and night prayers. There are some prayers that can only be prayed during the day. There are some prayers we pray during the night. Six. Violent faith. Seven. Violent praises. One. Constance. Two. Aggression. Three. Word bomb. Four. Hard fasting. Five. Day and night prayers. Six. Violent faith. And seven. Violent praises. When you increase your intensity in prayers, it will produce extraordinary answers. And I know there is somebody here who wants extraordinary answers. And you will get that answer in the name of Jesus. So for those of you who are taking notes here this morning, with the voice of an evangelist, can you tell me the seven levels of intensity in prayer? What is number one? Sorry, I can't hear you well. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Good. There are many enemies of prayers, but there are only two major enemies of prayer. 
I can sit down here and tell you 50 enemies, 100 enemies of prayers. But we can group all enemies of prayer under two categories. One, sin. Two, unbelief. That's all. Sin. A sinner is cooperating with the enemy of God to fight God. And God is under no obligation to answer the prayer of a rebellious child. Two, unbelief. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. He said, but let him ask in faith, not in wavering. Because a man who doubts is at the wind of the sea tossed here and there. The Bible says, if any of you shall say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall believe what he has said in his heart, he said, it shall be so. Rise up on your feet now. I'm expecting extraordinary testimonies in the life of those who will participate in this morning's prayer. It is dangerous to keep quiet. It is dangerous to sit down. It is dangerous to sleep off. It is dangerous to allow the voice of the next person to you to overshadow your own. You have to strike when the iron is hot. Strike when the iron is what? Hot. Don't wait for all the miracles that have been gathered before you start praying. The Bible says it has given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. It is not a gentle procedure to start trampling on serpent and scorpion. If many of you see a snake under your chair, you probably run away. But a man who stands and, began, and tries to trample on, the, trample on the snake, he's doing a violent job. So it's a violent job. Close your eyes now. The first thing to do this morning is this. Is there anything that will hinder my prayer? Father, forgive me. Ask him to forgive you. That's the first thing to do. And do it very well. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still praying. I want you to talk to yourself as we take this prayer. My body, my soul, and my spirit, hear the word of the Lord. Receive divine touch and glorify God. By the time you take this prayer, your body, soul, and spirit will be positioned for outstanding, outstanding, unquerable <laughs> testimony that no one can explain. Hallelujah. <laughs> my body, my soul, and my spirit hear the word of the Lord. Receive divine torch. 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 In the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to yourself. Begin to talk to yourself. Oh yes. Be positioned for what God alone can do. That surpasses human understanding. My body, my soul, my spirit. They are the word of the Lord. The divine touch, the touch of God, the touch of the Holy Spirit, the touch of the blood of Jesus. Ah, oh, receive it, 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 oh yes. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm.
In Jesus name we pray. We shout this to the heavens. Thank you, Father. By divine violence. You had the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent, not the weak. The violent take it by force. By divine violence. Let my portion be restored to me in the name of Jesus. Aha! By violence! Take it! Take it! Take it! Don't let go! Don't let go! Oh yes! By divine violence! My portion! My portion! Aha! My portion! Oh yes! Be restored to me! Be restored to me! In the name of Jesus, be restored to me. Aha! By violence! By violence! By violence! Aha! Divine violence! Oh yes! My passion! Wherever you are, whoever is taking you, wherever you have been tied down, my passion! Be restored to me! Be restored to me! Be restored to me! In the name of Jesus! Be restored to me! In the name of Jesus! Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We catch altars assigned to waste my destiny. You are a liar. Catch fire. Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! In the name of Jesus! Set them a place! Set them a place! Set them a place! Fire! Uh-huh. Fire! <laughs> Open the wicked altar! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Oh yes! Spirit of God, begin to move now on behalf of some people here this morning. Oh yes! That which have been altered, or wicked altars, aha, spirit of the living God, that which has been altered, or wicked altars, against our destiny, spirit of the living God, in Jesus' name we pray, greater serpent, arise, and swallow. Serpent, poisoning my life. Are we ready now? All of us, all together, shout it loud. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Oh yes, the dark serpents must die. The poisons must die. Oh yes! Greater serpents! Swallow them up! Swallow them up! Every dark serpent poisoning my life! Every dark serpent poisoning my family! Every dark serpent poisoning my children! Every dark serpent poisoning my work! Every dark serpent poisoning my business! Your time is up! Greater serpents! Swallow them up! 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 In the name of Jesus! Hmm. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We shout this prayer. Any sickness, any health condition you may have now, 
Whether you know about it or you don't know about it, it doesn't matter. Any sickness that wants to overtake my life, your time is up. Die! Die! What else? You're a liar. Your time is up. Die! Die! In the name of Jesus. Die! 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 In the name of Jesus. Die! In the name of Jesus. Die! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Stop on enemies that have refused to let me go. You are not. Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Why us? Why us? Let them die. Let them die. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. From this week, you begin to move forward. Yes, from this week, your children that have been summarized and referred to as no testimony, no improvement, no progress. They can't even catch up with their mates. They are backbenchers. The story will change in the name of Jesus. Their glory shall shine and blind the enemy. That song that they have closed your mouth, that you will not sing from this week, you start to sing the song of victory, the song of Moses, the song of testimony, the song of joy. In the name of Jesus. We are addressing the garment of darkness. This garment has covered the glory of many lives. This garment of darkness has weighed down many, many testimonies. It has brought down flying eagles, buried them to the dust. What is the judgment of God for them? They catch fire. You are praying. It can be personal. It can be collective. But what I know is, our God answers by fire. The fire of God will set them ablaze. And the glory, God as a portion to every life and to this land will shine forth. Open your mouth and pray now. Every garment of darkness Covering my glory. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. fire. In the name of Jesus. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your two hands to the heavenly now. And let your amen be dynamic as I pray. Let the voice of your amen shake the seat paddle of hellfire. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. 
every prayer that your children have prayed here at this prayer meeting, by the power of the God of Elijah, oh God, answer by fire. 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 Master Poka Teneke Abosha. Answer by fire. In the name of Jesus. There are three words of prophecy for somebody. I don't know who you are, but let me say them. The Lord said, I should tell you that those associations of witchcraft powers that troubled you last year, they shall all be buried this year. Secondly, the Lord shall I should tell somebody here that in a way that no one understands, what they say is not possible for you shall be made possible. Yes. And then the Lord shall I should tell somebody here. And all the efforts your enemies are making shall only advance your promotion. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.